parts of that speech. Let's look at McEnany. Hello, everyone. It is Friday. and this Dude, Republicans are so... Okay, w one last thing I'll say about it is this, before we move on to McEnany talking about this, okay? Republicans are so fucking fundamentally owned by the American government, especially the Democratic Party, that they literally killed themselves, okay? In, in the hundreds of thousands, by refusing to take a fucking vaccine, that would have helped them survive this illness, okay? Like, there is, I can't think of anything more cucked than dying to own the libs. You have nothing. You are a slave to the system. You think, you think that you are a lion. But you are a sheep. You have no critical thinking skills. You just go on Facebook and you read other fucking brain broken idiots like you. Okay. Who tell you that like, you know, vaccines are bad or that Biden is the, the second coming of, of communist Jesus. And you just get angry. You get angrier and angrier. And the reality is the Democratic Party owns you so fucking hard. That it killed your parents. Your day is worse overall every single day because you're like, Brandon is president and he's fucking ruining my life. At that point, it's probably healthier for you to tune out. You know what I mean? And just live your life. I promise it's probably better for you. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany. Joining me today, Cheryl Cassoni, Tommy Laren. Dr. Nicole Sapphire and Sean Duffy. Well, we begin with what you watched last night. President Biden's not so unifying speech, despite promises to unify America when he took the oath of office. Love that. The president, in front of what critics describe as a dark and angry red background, used a national address. That's right, you paid for it with your taxpayer dime. He used his national address last Bro, this is the same shit that MSNBC pulled. Like, this is exactly what Trump did, and with way worse, by the way. And that's exactly what Rachel Maddow said. Everyone's the same person. I love it, dude. Everyone's the same person. Everyone is incredibly just libbed up. They are just copy-pasting the same fucking rhetoric from the MSNBC side at Fox News now. Last night, to portray. Oh, I just uh, threw uh, a, a bottle in the trash. Half That's what the noise was. Of Americans as threats to the very foundation of our country. Watch. There's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. They embrace anger, they thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth. But it's also true. Like, that's the funniest part about it is that, like, what Joe Biden is saying is just fundamentally true. But in the shadow of lies, MAGA Republicans look at America and see carnage and darkness and despair. They spread fear and lies. That's why respected conservatives like Federal Circuit Court Judge Michael Ludwig has called... Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans quote a clear and present danger to our democracy. But in the very same breath, he tried to be Mr. Unity. American president. Wait, wait, but they're admitting it. They're like, they're literally admitting it. Okay, so that's weird. How are you gonna get mad uh, that they, that he was trying to have a unifying message overall? Okay, got it. That's. It's just, there's nothing funnier than being terrified of a dude who uh, can barely walk, by the way. Just absolutely fucking shitting your pants. The peak cowardice. Not a president of red America, blue America, but of all America. That's why tonight I'm asking our nation to come together, unite. We are still an America that believes in honesty and decency and respect for others. Look, I know polish, politics can be fierce and mean and nasty in America. I get it. Democracy begins and will be preserved in we the people's habits of the heart.
Empathy that fuels democracy. The willingness to see each other, not as enemies, but as fellow Americans. I could not believe what I watched last night, Tommy. Uh, the best description that came to mind was split personality disorder. Because on yeah. one hand, you had Biden saying, half the country's a threat to democracy. We're a clear and present danger to society. But let's unite and let's not demonize our fellow man. Uh, which Biden is real, one or two? I don't know. Well, what I heard is let's unite against people that support Donald Trump, which is 74 million plus Americans, probably many more after last night, certainly dusting off the mega hat. But I just want to explain to those that aren't familiar of what a mega Republican is, because I don't think the Democrats, I don't think Joe Biden has it straight. A mega Republican is not an extremist. It's not somebody who denies elections. A mega a Republican is somebody who loves their country, loves their family, wants their country to come first, loves law enforcement, loves the military. It's those forgotten Americans in the heartland of our country that work hard every single day, don't ask for much from anybody, do their thing, want the government to be as small as possible, and they united behind Donald Trump because he brought that message. That's what a mega Republican is. And the fact that our sitting president used our tax dollars to stand there and say what he said, flanked by Marines no less, who also love their country, was disgusting to so many Americans on the right and on the left. I truly believe that. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Um, you know, Sean, I, I couldn't help but think of the faces of thousands of people I've seen across the country, to Tommy's point, who are MAGA Republicans. There are millions. I, I've personally met probably thousands. You know, a veteran who told me with tears in his eye uh, that, in fact, his life was saved because he called the veteran hotline and got help. And it was Laura Trump, actually, who picked up the phone and personally reached out to him. I thought about a young man um, in Michigan. Again, tears in his eyes because the First Step Act got him out of a nonviolent, overly burdensome sentence. Um, and he was back with his family that Christmas. I mean, I thought of a, a mom who said, my son waited in line the right way to become an immigrant to this country, to become a citizen. And she was so proud to go to a Trump rally. That's who I thought about. Attack the candidate all you want, but do not dare attack the men and women, the veterans who have served this country and put their lives on the line. What? Uh, and support the Constitution. You know, this is flag, faith, freedom. That's what uh, MAGA Republicans believe in. And I've met thousands of them. I've been to Trump rallies. Some of the best people you meet in this country, nonviolent, friendly, happy, pro-American people. And this Did is you just say when you insult the MAGA event. Republicans, was, you're insulting uh, our brave veterans? Event, which is just, I mean, sick all the way around and, and to the point of the Marines standing behind him. Yep. This year. Like, yeah, every veteran is a MAGA Republican, dude. Yeah, it's fucked up. I fucking... Gotta, gotta wipe the... I'm not hot, it's just that I got some fucking... Shit popping off. Um... Yeah, I'm wiping... I'm wiping the tears from my eyes because this wonderful speech has um, has got me captivated. Very red <laughs> backdrop. Um, he, he mean uh, he looked like the villain, but he, this is what's happening here. I mean, you you have Joe Biden classifying 74 million Americans as extremists, as fascists. When you have what? extremists, fascists, terrorists that are half of America, you have to use every resource available to take them out, whether it's the government, big tech, media, intelligence, mm -hmm. law enforcement, they need to be rooted out of this society. And so Joe Biden is, I think, setting the stage for a war against half of America, because if you want to fundamentally transform America, you can't have 74 million people standing in your way. And I think this is, this is the predicate to making sure. I mean, 74 million is not half of America, brother. We got like 330 million motherfuckers in here. Also, also, I mean, this is unhinged like Alex Jones shit, dude. Literally being like, they're going to lock up every Republican in a FEMA camp. Like, you're crazy. You're cr this is just insanity. But it would be pretty sick, though. Not gonna lie, I'd be so on board with that.
That'd be pretty fire. I wish I wish that was a campaign promise. They have the backdrop to go after every single Trump supporter. Speaking of backdrops, you mentioned it. <laughs> uh, the hellish blood red yes. backdrop. Yeah. Dr. Sapphire, um, I saw Scott Walker, former governor, put up this tweet. You know, it was the inauguration day Biden, the Mr. Unity of Biden, you know, how it went versus how it's going with the blood red background. Uh, likewise, Dark Brandon, who was supposed to be a superhero, is now uh, very villainous. Um, we have those, we'll <laughs> pop them up. You know, I also thought that the background was pretty poor. I mean, this is literally just like, She, she unlocked the QVC voice. You know what I mean? Um, it was very villainous. Dark Brandon. Look at that. He's a villain. Poor optics. It definitely was in line with their um, dark brain. You know, I mean, just look at that. It's, it's too much. Uh, but the president missed the opportunity to be honest with the American people last night. If he wanted to speak out against extremism, he would have called out extremism on both on sides left. of the aisle and not just focus on the Republican side of it. I mean, he was talking about how he's upset that FBI uh, members who who raided Mar-a-Lago, that they were getting personal threats of violence against them, but he was silent when the SCOTUS justices were having a murder. Murder. That's not true. Dark Brandon is a pussy. He literally did bring that up. Instead of saying, go forward and prosper. May your, may your hands be steady as you aim the barrel of the gun, striking at the heart of the anti-democratic institutions. Cut the malarkey, Jack. Like, that's what they're making it seem like, he said. You know what I mean? <laughs> May your justice be swift. <laughs> Accusation of murder threats against them. And so he was silent there and he kept saying democracy is under threat. And he's absolutely right. Good opportunity to talk about the fact that it's becoming obvious his administration, the DOJ, Surgeon General, they've been working in cahoots with social media to silence opinions that have a big yeah, that's what, that's so funny. Yeah, why didn't, why didn't Joe Biden say his DOJ is, uh, is working against democracy? To silence opinions. Yeah, he should have said that instead. You're right. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> why didn't he say that? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just so dumb. Been in line with them. And so and on what he did was he made um, Donald Trump and his supporters public enemy number one. And I will say that, yes, Donald Trump is a threat to President Biden, but not the way that he wanted to portray it. He's a threat to him having a second term, whether Donald Trump wants to run himself or is going to support another Republican to. That is the biggest threat that Donald Trump has to President Biden because his policies have failed. And Cheryl, I, you know, Dana Perino made a great point this morning. If, if the fascist MAGA Republicans are such a threat, then why do Democrats fund them in primaries to the tune of $43 million, according to Newsweek? Um, this tweet out from Natalie Allison of Politico, there's now a McConnell-Schumer super PAC ad war over the next week and a half in the New Hampshire Republican primary race. And he points out the Democrats have put $3.1 in to try to get an ultra MAGA candidate elected so if they're such a threat you're funding them <laughs> <laughs> well they're hoping that they that they can defeat true good point actually true interesting hmm <laughs> who could have said who could have foreseen this backfiring by the way that is true definitely a strategy that hasn't failed before by the way <laughs> My brother and I saw Biden's speech last night, and now he wants to kill the president. So much for unity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. That's like, that is kind of what they're saying. They're like, they're, they're like, it triggered the fuck out of us. And now we want to do violent shit. said candidate, but look, last night was overtly political. The good news is that none of the major networks 
took the comments from the president. Only two cable networks took those comments because they knew that this was had nothing to do with democracy or the spirit of America, which is what they build it as. And the cleanup on aisle five has already begun uh, from Queen Jean Pierre, the press secretary. Now she's trying to say, and she was on the podium saying this. Well, this is we're more targeting, um, you know, those that are that are MAGA candidates or you know, the office holders. We're, we're we're targeting those in Congress, those with power. They know that they offended half the country. And let's also be clear here, not all Republicans are Trump backers or Trump believers, but they are card carrying members of the Republican Party. Maybe they like the policies of Donald Trump. Maybe they didn't like the man so much, you know, so but you're you're taking that group as well and you're galvanizing them. So what they're doing is going to have the exact opposite. I, think I mean, he literally said, like, if you are a card carrying Republican and you like Donald Trump, then don't. Like he, he literally said. Over and over again, uh, there is a, uh, you know, real Republicans out there that care about American democracy, which they don't, by the way. They don't. They don't. They don't. That's bullshit. But I'm calling out all those Republicans that aren't MAGA Republicans. You know what I mean? And it's stupid because, you know, and, and this bears repeating, those guys don't exist. They're not real. They're all the fucking Republican Party still loves Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump did not deviate away from the main agenda of the Republican Party. Donald Trump's rhetoric surrounding the, the stolen election is not even a deviation from the Republican Party. It's just way more in your face. He has a way to, communi he has a way to communicate. He has, Donald Trump has a, a, a beautiful way to communicate the, the Republican Party's platform, okay, in a manner that uh, most dummies can understand. That's it. Of what they're planning to do. Yeah, but Tom, but, but, can, yeah. I, I would just make the point really quick. It's like 95% of the party that supports Trump or DeSantis. These, yeah. are, these are MAGA candidates. This well, is not a party of establishment figures. Th th this is, yeah, this is not the uh, squishy Republican. True! Party. This is the, 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 the MAGA wing. And what does MAGA is make America great again? So he's not saying specifically Donald Trump. He's saying MAGA. And MAGA is the policies that, you know, put America first, the American worker first, American manufacturing first. We're going to look, look out for our people first. It's the philosophy behind Donald Trump that he's attacking, mm -hmm. not necessarily Donald Trump himself. And it's the people that you said can either support Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, but the whole party, for the most part, supports these policies that put our people yeah, Penn. That's how you know this is a fake lib, by the way. That's how you know this motherfucker they got here. Not a real one. He can't even say MAGA right. He literally can't even say MAGA right. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're fake. I'm a real one. I love Donald Trump. He doesn't. He's fake. I mean, another great example, another yeah. top three <clears throat> contender who supports the Trump policies. Tommy, last word to you. I just wonder what those Marines were thinking, because they might have been MAGA Republicans. They may have been. They likely were. Either way, they love their country, right? But let's just think about <clears throat> the imagery that that portrayed. And it yeah, definitely. They were, they were, they loved it. Yeah, well, guess what, dude? That's what happens when you're a fucking boot, okay? You need to suck it the fuck up and respect your commander-in-chief and get stance the fuck up behind him as he says every MAGA Republican, MAGA Republican, is a fucking fascist, okay? Such is, such is life in the big city, okay? That's how it works. Now, we don't even know that that's the case, but hey, guess what, dude? Sucks to suck. And if it were Donald Trump giving the same speech, how militant that looked, how intimidating that looked, to use those Marines as a, a political prop to make a political speech against half the country, not only inappropriate, but I would go as far as to say un-American. Shame on our president for doing that. It was a sad <laughs> moment, and I'm, I'm with you. I'm so glad the broadcast network... <laughs>